Hi folks, you are very welcome to my new studio. It's not finished yet, but it's getting there. It's still under construction. This has been a major reason on the delay in the production of my upcoming Civil Rights Part 2 video for Manny Man Does History. Moving house is a lot of work, let alone gutting an old house to its bare bones and building it back up. This office used to be an old stone shed, so yeah. You'll see more of it as my videos go on. Uh, about this video and more to come, I've been wanting to do this style of video for a while. A, a segment I call John Talks, where John talks, where I discuss topics related to history. It might be current affairs, it might be something further back, but I want to explore some more opinion pieces which don't have to be fully illustrated like Manny Man does history videos. They can be quicker to produce and can run alongside my production of the animated stuff. If you'd like to support the creation of all of these videos, you can help out at patreon.com forward slash John D. Ruddy. So first topic to chat about, Israel and Palestine. Oh my. Woohoo. So, to give a brief history, I do intend to do a, a full Manny Man Does History video on this. It is on the list, but I wanted to talk about it now because of what we are seeing in the news these days. So to give a very basic summary of the history of the area, the Jewish people lived in Palestine in ancient times. Indeed, the Romans came and controlled their territory. It's here that the story of Jesus Christ emerges, some believing him to be the Messiah, the prophesied Jewish hero to lead the Jews to victory. Those who believed in him went on to form the Christian church. Many other Jews believed he wasn't the Messiah. He was a very naughty boy. No. Sorry, I couldn't resist that one. Uh, many believed he wasn't the Messiah and continued waiting. Over the centuries, Jewish people faced massive persecution, constantly being expelled from this country or that city, or worse, straight up murdered. Also, content warning for religious persecution and genocide. As the faith of Islam emerged from the Arab Peninsula, the Holy Lands became conquered by Muslims. Christian Europeans came to the Holy Lands on crusades throughout the Middle Ages trying to take control of the Holy Lands, but ultimately they were defeated. The Holy Lands were religiously important to Christians, Muslims, and of course Jews. This territory would be controlled by various groups of Muslims for centuries. Jewish people lived in small communities across Europe, constantly under the shadow of when are people going to get super anti-Semitic to the point where they expel us or exterminate us. World War I saw the dissolution of the Ottoman Empire, which controlled much of the Middle East. France and Britain divided up the territory, creating states such as Syria and Palestine. This was seen as an opportunity for many Jewish people to return to their ancestral homeland after centuries of exile. At the same time, anti-Semitism was once again growing strong in Europe. For more on anti-Semitism, check out Philosophy Tube's excellent video on the topic. As we all know, the anti-Semitism in Europe took a terrible crescendo in the 1940s with Nazi Germany's final solution to the Jewish question rounding up people and murdering them in death camps, along with various other minorities. Many countries aided Germany in rounding these people up, some under duress, but many people didn't need much convincing. Six million Jewish people were murdered in the Holocaust. To put that in context, 6.8 million people live on the island of Ireland today. Some Jews returned to their homes in Europe. Many went to America. Many Jews found their homes taken by other people after the war. No welcome. There was a call from the fledgling Israel for the Jewish people of Europe to come to the Middle East, and so many moved to Israel. This had huge international backing, particularly from the USA. On one hand, you can look at it like they should absolutely have a country of their own after what has just happened to them. But you could also see it as, oh yeah, finally, a place for them to go, not on my doorstep. Of course, there were the Palestinians, 
who had been living there for centuries, for generations. And long story short, they began to be chased off their own land. And what followed was decades of conflict between Israel and its Arab neighbours and indeed the Palestinians living in what was becoming more and more Israel. Again, I'll cover all the different wars in a Manny Man video at some point. But Israel, armed to the teeth with US weapons, expanded their territory greatly at the expense of the Palestinians. Many Palestinians left as refugees, hoping they could return when things settled down but they've been unable to return. There have been various peace talks throughout the 20th century between Israeli and Palestinian leadership, but all the while on the ground, Palestinians lose their foothold, are treated as second-class citizens, if even, and ultimately have to resort to terrorism through the group Hamas to fight the military juggernaut of the Israeli army. What we're seeing here is colonialism. 20th and 21st century colonialism. We act shocked when we see these tactics, but we've seen it before. This is what happened across North America throughout the 19th century and before. Same with Africa. Same in so many places across the world. This is what colonialism does. This is what colonialism looks like. This is how it works. You want land, but there are people on it. Those people might attack you because they feel threatened. Rightly so. And so you use the excuse to annihilate them, to destroy their entire civilization, to bomb them back to the Stone Age. Israel claims it's acting in self-defense because Hamas attacks them, but the scale of their retaliation is completely disproportionate. And the thing that always happens with colonialism is, oh, they're all dead? Well, I guess they're not using the land anymore. It'd be a shame to waste it. I, I guess we'll just have to move in. People are pleased to hear the news of yet another ceasefire between Israel and Palestine. But it's like scolding a child after they've already eaten the entire cake. They've gotten what they wanted. Palestine is in a worse and much weaker state than before this current conflict. And they don't have the resources to build back up again because Israel controls them. And the rest of the world watches. As an Irish person, I recognise a lot of this pattern of colonialism. Indeed, in Northern Ireland, there are many Irish nationalists who, for decades, have shown support and solidarity with the Palestinians because they identify with the idea of being colonised. I, for one, come down on the Palestinian side of the conflict. Call me biased in the comments all you want. What is being done to Palestinians is wrong. And the tragic irony is that it is being perpetrated by a people whose history is rife with being persecuted. It's sadly a pattern where the abused can so often become the abuser. The bullied can so often become the bully. And I know about that, having both been the bullied and indeed the bully. There's a powerful play called Seven Jewish Children by British playwright Carol Churchill, which explores the evolution of a community going from the persecuted to the persecutor. It's a short six-page play and I highly recommend it. It was written in 2009, I took part in a public reading of it in 2014, and it continues to be just as relevant today in 2021. What happens after this ceasefire? Will Israel somehow miraculously think, oh, maybe we shouldn't treat the Palestinians like animals? Maybe we should stop continuing to take more and more of their land. Maybe we should let them live. Maybe. The international community is so scared to do anything about it, possibly for fear of being labelled anti-Semitic. That's been a very effective shroud that Zionists have hid behind, Zionists being those who believe in a Jewish state. 
If someone criticises Israel, they run the risk of being seen as anti-Semitic. But it's something we need to reinforce all the time. Zionists are not all Jewish people. The Israeli government does not speak for all Jewish people. Sarah Silverman had a very interesting segment on her podcast where she talked about being frustrated as a Jewish person, as an American Jewish person, constantly being asked to answer for Israel or to denounce Israel or to support Israel and how no matter what she says she's gonna annoy somebody. And it's such a delicate discourse out there because there is indeed actual anti-Semitism too. With the rise of far-right politics in the West, there indeed comes up the age-old anti-Semitism. The conspiracy theories, the Jews are controlling everything. So we do need to be careful when talking about this. I've thought about that very carefully when thinking about even writing this. When thinking of European inaction when it comes to Israel, because I think there is still both a legacy of guilt over the Holocaust on one hand and indeed the anti-Semitism of, yep, let's keep them down there out of our hair. And then of course the elephant in the room, if you pardon the pun, the United States funding the whole thing, I mean more or less. Both Democrats and Republicans, more so Republicans and folks on the right, what doesn't help is when you have a massive amount of evangelical Christians who genuinely believe that the end of the world is coming soon and a way of speeding that up is by having all of the Jews return to Israel as it is part of the prophecy in the book of Revelation. How is that allowed to shape international government policy? It's insane. People willing the world to end because God's going to come down and take them all up to heaven and wipe away all those bad sinners. It's insane that that shapes government policy. So this is my two cents on it. Support Palestine. Donate to charity. Boycott Israeli products. I honestly don't know how there can be a future for Palestinians in Israel seeing the amount of bigotry coming from some people there. Like I said, I will have a Manny Man Does History video about all of this at some point. And it's going to be as balanced as it can be in the face of human justice. For now, I can get back to working on my Civil Rights Part 2 video. Let me know in the comments what you think of this video format. I'm always interested to hear your feedback. You can support me at patreon.com forward slash John D. Ruddy. The more financial support I have there, the more I can concentrate on these videos and produce more for YouTube. As it stands, I continue to rely on outside work too. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok and Twitch. Now that I'm getting the new studio up and running, I aim to do more streaming of drawing and video games. Thanks for watching. Welcome to my newcomers on Patreon, Gretchen Sand, Jamie, Patrick McGrath. Thanks to all my patrons, Alexander, Arthur Revan, Chair DJ, Colton Sayre, Crystal, David Stranad, Dustin Holden, Emer Gibson, Senan, age 10, Helena R.B., Jefferson Yates, Joshua Benjamin Heisler, Judy Friesen, Catherine Gilks, Kythias, Lepre Shea Queen Vara, M., Marcus Booker, Mike Wise, Monday Rico, Mr. Magnificent, Mr. Research, Classy Black Men, Mr. Easy Play 2, Mycroft, Myth Nguyen, Ollie Course, Rocket Wrench, Ryan Elano, SB, Suarez, Stephanie Lenz, Tan May, Thomas Woods, Travis Dunn, Wendy Barley. Once again, thank you.